Hey everybody, Panther0822. Sorry, I need to adjust something here for a second. Alright, I think we should. Should be good. Alright, there we go. I apologize. I am in the process of trying to adjust a few things. Um, ah, that doesn't work. Okay, there we go. Uh, all right, I apologize. I, I'm, I'm a little flustered. I was, I'm in the process of uploading the last video up to uh, Facebook, and it's still in the process of uploading the video, but it has one of the tags. It says share with things, and there's a little blue box that says, now you can do X, and it tells you that you can, I mean, it's just a short little message, and it's a blur, and it's like, okay, yay, I got it, and then I hit the X, and then it doesn't go away. It annoys the hell out of me. It is actually something that I've seen more and more software developers do, where you'll go to something, and there'll be a little splash message, hey, you can do X, which, I mean, it's cool, it's fantastic, and then you hit the X button to get rid of the damn message and the message just doesn't go the fuck away. And it's just more of a headache and annoyance. And you sit there and you click on it 15 times and it doesn't go away until like the video is completely uploaded or you're like done with whatever task it is. And it's a, just an annoying little freaking nuisance. that's there the entire damn time. So sorry that that was a rant. Um, but that actually kind of leads into what I wanted to talk about as far as this particular video goes. I've been promising that I was going to do a video as far as uh, me and my disabilities and what they are and how they relate to me. And yeah, so that's, the, that's what this video is going to be about. So that rant actually kind of moderately relates to, to my health issues. Um, but I'll, I'll I actually... <laughs> I actually followed my wife's advice this particular time. I think she'd be moderately proud of me. Uh, I actually have a, I have a checklist on my iPad that I can actually go through. All right, I talked about this. I talked about this. So, uh, <laughs> anyways. Uh, all right, I needed that laugh. That was more for me, so sorry about that. Um, all right, so let's talk about me. Let's talk about my disabilities. Um like I've stated in other videos, this has actually been recommended to me from my doctors. My doctors have actually stated, hey, you know what might actually do some good if you actually wrote this shit down as far as what happens to you on a daily basis or um, do a video about it. And then it's like, you don't have to post it. You don't have to put it out into the ether so that it, or you don't have to put it out in, in video so that people can see it. But at least maybe doing a video or writing it out will help you. Jack Fanth. Canfield actually talks about something similar in one of his seminars that I have uh, on audio tape. I don't quite remember what it is, but it, I mean, it, it, it's an entire process. But one of the processes is, is you go, I think it's like the total accountability letter. I think is what he calls it, but I don't 100% remember. Um, if this video ever actually gets large enough in Jack Canfield, if you actually see this, um, I hope I did you credit on that. <laughs> if I didn't, I'm really sorry. Um, anyways, basically what, what it is, is it is, um, you basically go out and you say, all right, this is what X is. And then you go through it. So, um, let's kind of start at the beginning a little bit. The beginning would be as far as my disabilities go would be when I was 18 months, when I was 18 months and an inner infection, it went into my throat swelling what's called the epiglottis flap. For those of you who are non-medical people who have no idea what that is, basically there's a little flap in your throat that whenever you eat and drink, make sure things go down the right tube. That's what that's what that particular flap, uh, flap is. So um, the downside is that particular flap basically is kind of over your windpipe. So the inner ear infection went down into my throat, swelling the epiglottis flap. The epiglottis flap sealed over my windpipe for a total of five and a half minutes. Now, again, back to, for those of you who are non-medically inclined and don't know, brain damage occurs, starts occurring at four minutes. So anything at four minutes and longer is causes brain damage. So it just gets scarier and scarier and scarier 
for the medical personnel who are trying to save me. And it's scary and scary and scarier for my parents because they don't know what's going on and they're praying that I don't die. So obviously I didn't die because I'm here and I'm making this video. Unless I have some type of weird ghost. Nah, any, anyways, that gets into a whole, a whole realm of existential things. Um, so that's been, that's what happened when I was 18 months. I had an ear infection, went into my throat, swelled my upper clot uh, As a result, over my windpipe, five and a half minutes. Uh, so mild to moderate brain damage. Because of that, I do have some disabilities. So those disabilities, again, watching these videos, you probably won't catch it. You probably won't know. But I'm just going to uh, um, I'm going to educate you guys because something that I find that's really, really important that people really need to know, and I think people tend to forget this when they're dealing with somebody who is disabled. Here's the truth, guys. The majority of disabled people are highly intelligent people. You would actually, most people tend to underestimate how intelligent people who have disabilities are. Most of the time, most of us, not all of us, but most, a very large to most portion of us tend to be some of the most important people. I, an example I can give you is Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking is one of our most brilliant people on the planet. And the man is confined to a wheelchair and he, and he has created a way for him to communicate to the world and express himself to the world and to function within the world. And he's in a wheelchair because of the disability that he has. Okay. So that's an, that's an extreme example as far as somebody that's noteworthy that actually has a disability that is still functioning within a society that is highly functioning. There are, don't get me wrong. There are people who are fully, who have full blown disabilities that are zero functional within society. Don't don't misunderstand me and staying or don't misunderstand me that I think that every person who has a disability um, is highly intelligent. There's a there is a portion of people who have an extreme who have disabilities that are so extreme that they're non-functional within society. Now, keep in mind, society has a set of rules and we define what those set of rules are and that's how we define society. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of those rules. I really don't. Um, if you really want to know, you'll need to actually throw some stuff in the chat in, in the messages below, and I'll respond to you in kind as far as that goes. Like I've said, another rule in other things, I'm open to discussion. I like discussion. If you're going to be an ass about it, I probably actually won't respond to you, or I may actually give you an asshole response in return and then block you or tell you to fuck off. Okay, so I, just, I need you to understand. I'm good for conversations. I like conversations. But if you're going to be an ass about it, I won't tolerate it. Just so that you know. Um, that's, a, that's a divergent from things. But in a certain degree, that does actually have to do with my, my mental state and, and my disabilities. I don't put up with bullshit. I don't put up with my own bullshit very well. I don't put up with other people's bullshit very well, if you don't believe me. I'll get my I can get my wife from my brother-in-law, and you can ask them as far as how well I put up with people's bullshit. I just I, I'm I'm horrendous at it. Um, it's my own fault. So that's my accountability. I account for that. My screw. Anyways, um, back to what my 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 disabilities are. So, um, so let, let's see here. So age, as far as that goes, severity goes. Covered the severity issues. Let's actually let's actually take a minute. I'm actually gonna check off the thing so I don't forget what I have or what I am talking about. All right, so issues because of it. All right, so here's the issues that are that are a result of of the uh, of the brain damage when I was when I was 18 months. Um, so I have a reading disability. Um, I read at a horrendously slow rate very slow rate to the point where for the most part I read when I decide to read. I generally don't read a book unless it highly interests me. And I mean, like I've got to be like a horrendous geek about it in order for me to actually want to read it. Uh, speaking of geeks and I'm going to just go on to a side note here really quick. Geeks are functional society. Nerds are not. There is actually a technical difference between a geek and a nerd. A geek is a person that you'll talk to and you assume they're a nerd. However, they're the, the geek is the guy that holds a job that doesn't live in his mom's basement, that has a wife or a kid or has a girlfriend 
and it's functioning in society, but you're like, God, this guy is a geek. All he talks about is Star Trek or Star Wars or DBZ or D&D or whatever your particular, whatever your particular geekdom is. You're like, oh my God, this person is a geek. <laughs> okay. Geeks are functional within society. Nerds are not functional within society. Um, nerds know a lot. Don't get me wrong. They have a high functioning there, the, but there, there, there's a social uh, thing that goes on with a nerd that for some, they're, they have a hard time relating to other people. They have a hard time relating in life. So it's not that they can't get a job. It's not that they can't hold a job. It's not that they can't do things. It's just that because of, of that nerdhood, it's in its own way, nerd, being a nerd is almost not always, but can be likened to a disability in its own way, because in some ways, some nerds never, ever grow up. Um, they have a horrendous time managing money. They live in their parents' house and they can't seem to get out of their parents' house because they can't be bothered to do something other than whatever their particular n nerdism is focused on. Um, so just to be clear, there is a difference between a nerd and a geek. Geek is functional within society. Nerd is typically not. Again, there's always exceptions to the rules and that's not always the hard line. Just need wanted to go off on that tangent for a minute to show that anyways um so anyways reading reading sucks for me um an average i mean if it takes a person about an, a minute to read a page it takes me about two two and a half minutes to read a page i read at a much lower rate um i have a reading disability more specifically i have a reading comprehension disability I also have a comprehension disability. A lot of people tend to think they're one and the same. They are not. When I read something, I do not always understand what I am reading, and I typically have to go back and reread it, which is also why I have a slow reading speed and I hate reading. Not that I don't read, because there are some things that if you hand it to me, I won't put it down. When I was in college, you'd hand me a programming book and you couldn't get the damn thing out of my hands. So that's important to understand. There is some stuff that I will sit down and I will read because it fascinates me. Even with my reading disability, it fascinates me enough for me to get over my reading issues. So that's that. I have a verbal comprehension issue. So here's what a verbal comprehension issue is. You and I will be talking and you'll say something like the grass is green. It's a very obvious, very plain statement. However, my brain will somehow inevitably end up turning that into the grass is blue on a green sky. Huh? Okay. So the way that I've used to explain this, the way that it works is basically you can think about a wire mesh. The information hits that wire mesh, goes through that wire's mesh, and then my brain has to put it back together. That's the way, that's the best example I can give somebody. So if you've ever seen a wire mesh with all of its patterns and how small it is and things like that, think about basically taking a pile of dirt, throwing it at it or trying to push it through it. And then once you've pushed it through it, now you've got to reassemble all of that dirt back into what it was originally. Doesn't always go so well. <laughs> so that's that particular disability as far as that goes. I have a gross fine motor disability. So basically that means any small movements with my fingers. So tightening a screw with my fingers, uh, actually writing with a pencil that requires gross fine motor, not so things like that. It's, it's small motions of the hands that require the smaller minute muscles within the hand itself. That's a gross fine motor disability. So whenever it comes to doing a physical task, I tend to be much slower at it because of that, because of the gross fine motor. Um, I have also noticed that I basically, I, I call it basically a, a time lapse disability where basically there are times where I feel like I'm moving really fast, but I'm not, I'm actually moving really, really slow. And then there are times where I'm moving really, where I feel like I'm moving really, really, really slow, but I'm really, move, move, re really, really fast. It's really weird. Um, I, I can't really ex explain the exact feeling unless you've actually gone through that particular scenario. You'd have a hard time relating to that. So 
Um, so those are kind of the disabilities that I deal with on a daily basis. Uh, and, and it really sucks because I'll have to ask my wife. There, there are days where my verbal comprehension is so bad where I will have to ask my wife to repeat something to me three to five times. Number one, everybody hates repeating themselves, especially my wife. If you ask my wife to repeat something more than once, maybe twice, she's about ready to smack you upside your head. Um, so usually I have to preface it with, I usually have to look her dead in the face and be like, my comprehension is just kicking me in the ass today. I'm really sorry. What did you say? And then we go from there and make everything work. So that is those, again, those are the disabilities that I deal, deal with on a daily basis. I also have a, a extreme, a lot of ways I have an anger management issue. Um, it's kind of weird for me to say that out loud because for the most part, I don't always recognize it. Or a, 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 I don't recognize it necessarily. Um, usually not until like the beginning of this video where I just went into a rant about something that was honestly very stupid. There's no reason for me to get angry about it, but I got angry about it. Now, here's the kicker. I got angry about something stupid. Now I'm angry because I'm angry, which then just makes it worse. So I end up usually having to rant and rave about something for about 15 to 30 minutes, which usually pisses my wife off or anybody who's around me off because I'm fixated on this one little thing that I didn't need to get pissed off about in the first place. <laughs> Until it's out of my system, I'm not able to let it go. So it's, it's a frustrating issue, which now brings me kind of into... Um, kind of in, in, into the next step or, or the next stuff. So, um, so I've been dealing with that since the, since 18 months. So at this point I've been dealing with it 30 plus years. Um, so I mean, I've gotten to the point where I recognize that I can work with it. I can hold a job and I can do things like that until, uh, about six months ago where I basically got a huge kick in the pants. Um, I've been training in and out of martial arts all of my life. I know I've, I've, I've kind of handed out at some things as far as my martial training and things like that. I've been in and out of martial arts most of my life. Uh, I started, My dad and I started fencing when I was 11. And then in high school, I trained in Northern Long Fist Kung Fu with a private instructor who charged sweat. And he wasn't kidding. It was an hour and a half workout that by the end of it, if you weren't drenched in sweat, you were either really bloody in shape or you had something medically wrong with you. Um... We called it a Tron workout because the gentleman's name was Tron. He's a fantastic martial artist. He's a fantastic man. Love him to death. Um, I see him as, as kind of a father figure in some ways. Uh, he's just he's an awesome guy. And actually, I've been thinking about emailing him and see if the email I have for him is still valid because I've been thinking about reaching out to him. Um, but he's he, he's a fantastic teacher, and he kind of spoiled me for when I looked for further martial arts once I uh, I stopped training with him. Um, so that being said, after I, I graduated high school and then I got into karate, uh, with a company called USSD or United Studios of Self-Defense, they're based in California or they were based in California. I think they still are. I know that if you look them up, uh, they still have active schools. They still have active locations. So if you want to look them up, fantastic. I, I, um, there's a newer, there's a different school called Z Ultimate. Um, studios of self-defense. So I would actually recommend them more to you than USSDZ. Uh, Ultimate would be the it would be the martial arts that I would recommend to you. Uh, they span in between California and Colorado. Those are the schools that I'm aware of. Um, if you go to zultimate.com, you can take a look at their website, take a look, see if you can find a school uh, close to you. And I would encourage you to do that. Or find a local martial arts. Martial arts is very much part of my life. I love martial arts. I love teaching martial arts. And I love encouraging people to do martial arts. So I would encourage you to find a style that works for you. Do not limit it. And also find a, a, an instructor. If you go and you say, you know what? I tried karate, but I didn't really like it. Here's the reality. There's several different styles of karate. So if there's multiple dojos in your area, go to, you can go to each one. If after you've tried 15 different karate dojos and you go, this is not the one for me, then I can go, okay, maybe karate's not for you. And karate isn't for everybody. Karate, karate is, is for a particular group of people. There's also jujitsu, ninjitsu, um, 
judo, hapkido, aikido, uh, Brazil, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I mean, there's a plethora of martial arts styles. So I would encourage you to find one that works for you and train in that. That's what I would encourage you to do. Um, anyways, back to back back, back to that. Um, so I was training in karate, and every now and again, on my left hand side, my left leg would seize up on me. And my my instructor, I talked to my instructor about it, and he thought it might have just been a sciatica issue. Um, and I kind of agreed with him because I was kind of trusting in, in in his opinion, and I just kind of paid it no mind. And then eventually, I I moved out here to Washington. And I was working, and then one Friday, my leg just seized. I was I was literally bedridden uh, for about two days straight. The I was not really able to move any out of my bed. Uh, so the Saturday, I was finally able to move from my bed to the couch, but that took a lot of effort, and it hurt like a bitch. Um, I have a high, high pain tolerance. For the most part, what I would deem as a pain level two or three, most people probably would deem it about a six or a seven. I have a very high pain tolerance. I think a lot of that might just be the brain damage or some of it might be the martial arts training to where I'm conditioned to where I, I, I can recognize or I can work through some things. That might be part of it. But the problem is I just might be stupid as far as not recognizing the actual level of the pain and doing something about it. It might be possible too. Um but anyway, Saturday I was having some issues. Sundays it got really bad. Saturday, the entire leg just basically went into solid pain. I could not move the leg itself. And I ended up going to emergent care either Sunday or Monday. And then I got referred out back to my uh, home doctor for a neurologist to try and figure out what was going on because I, I talked to them and they basically said, do you have pain going all the way through to your big toe? No. Then it's not sciatica. It's like, oh, okay. So there's definitely something going on, but it's not sciatica. Um, and then I work out at home. Uh, I don't do as much working out at home as I'd like to do. I need to get back into it. But anyways, with that being said, I would go through and I'd do workout with weights. I'd, I, I, I have a, basically a circuit workout where I have a treadmill and then I have some weights and then I'd do something else. And then I'd go back and I'd just kind of do a circuit workout. Um... Like I said, about six months ago, I noticed an issue where I'd have like nothing more than like a five pound weight in my hand and I was just doing basic, basic curls and the palm, the entire, entire palm of, of my hand, right hand specifically, um, would more or less go numb and my entire hand would get to the point where I'd almost drop the weight and there's no reason for it. It's a five pound weight. Why am I trying to, why, why is, why am I losing grip on a five pound weight? If it's a 50 pound weight, I can get it. I have a hard time lifting 50 pounds. Even with both hands, I have a hard time lifting 50 pounds. Um. I'm just physically, I'm not a strong guy. Although anybody who's ever sparred with me might actually tell you otherwise, because when I hit a person, I know how to hit a person. So that might equate for the difference. Um, but physically, I, I'm, I'm not that strong of a guy. I've, I, I can lift 50 pounds if I have to. I just don't like to because it's uncomfortable and it's difficult for me. Um, anyways, so right hand. So I, I relay that to, to the neurologist and they go, you know what? I want you to go and I, we want you to see somebody else as far as this goes. So I end up going to see another person and I tell him basically the same story that I've been repeating to doctors for the last about week. About I've repeated this the same story 15 times. That's probably a horrendous exaggeration. It's probably only three or four times, but when you tell some, when you're repeating the same information, it always feels like you're telling it so many more times than you actually are. So I finally get to uh, a, a neurologist who's who's a little bit more specific. He, he actually kind of has a niche as far as some things go. And he, and I tell him what's going on as far as what's going on with my leg, as far as what's going on with my hand. And he goes through and he does some in-house tests. And he goes, well, we're going to do a whole battery of tests. So we go through a whole battery of tests. And I mean, I do, we go through a battery of tests uh, in the span of about a month. Actually, not even on a span of a month. And then about a span of about two weeks, I ended up having, I want to say, in between two to four MRIs and two to four MRAs. And yes, there is a difference. I couldn't tell you what the difference is. For those of you who are medical people, uh, you'll know what that is. But, um, And then I also ended up having a spinal tap. Spinal tap was not quite as bad as I was I was expecting. They don't do it the same way as they do it on the television show House. 
Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Um. So, but they they went through and did all of these these tests, and all of the tests basically came back pointing towards and basically confirming the fact that I am dealing with multiple sclerosis. Um, so now we're adding multiple sclerosis on top of the mild to moderate brain damage. Now, for those of you who don't know what multiple sclerosis is, multiple sclerosis sucks. Um, it's an autoimmune disease. There's uh, When it comes to your brain, there's a protective layer uh, basically protecting the transmitters in your brain. Um, and I can't quite remember what the name is off the top of my head, but basically there's there's a protective sheath that's that goes around that. And the way that MS works is it basically it destroys that protective sheath is what it does. So basically your body's literally destroying itself from the inside out, which really sucks for me because, uh, I mean, when, when it first started, I would end up in pain maybe once a week. And it really wasn't that bad. It was just, it was a little bit of pain. It was mildly annoying, but it was what it was. And after a while, I kind of got used to it. But over about the last week, it's been kind of getting worse to where I'm in pain just about every day. Um, it's about a pain level two or three. I mean, it's an, it's definitely there. It's definitely annoying. And there are times where um, I'll do movement and it spikes from a two to an eight, just like that. I mean, it, it literally just snaps just that quickly and it incapacitates me for about 30 seconds to where I have to excuse me I have to stop take a minute and breathe and readjust my body to where I'm not in pain so that's kind of what's going on so that's what I that's that's what I am now dealing with I am now dealing with multiple sclerosis um yes there are medications for multiple sclerosis the medications that are available for multiple sclerosis are immune suppressants because that's how they have to treat it which sucks um the other thing that sucks and kind of the second part that i really kind of wanted to get on as far as this video goes but let me double do my checklist here so talk to the docs um Oh, yeah. All right. So there's the testing. There's the results. And, and that's what I'm dealing with right now. Okay. Um, so the MS, that's the, so the, the MS, I w I've been working at Walmart here in Puyallup uh, since April of 2015, all the way through September 20, no, October 26th, 24th of this year. Um, to where I had to step out of the workforce. Now, the reason I had to step out of the workforce was medically speaking. I had, I, I already had basically what's called an intermittent leave set up with Walmart. So if I needed to call out due to the EMS, I could call out once a day. I had to go through a process to do it. Um, gotta love, gotta, gotta love corporates. Uh, -uh I hate corporates. They annoy the hell out of me for a lot of different reasons. I'll probably actually do a reason. Uh, I'll probably actually do a video on why corporate America annoys the hell out of me. Um. So, anyways, I, I I had some things set up as as far as that goes to where I could do that, and it got to a point where I was calling out about once a week, and I really hated that because my co -work, my my I worked in the electronics department. And I was one of the most knowledgeable people there. Now that a lot of people might go, well, that's an arrogant thing to say. Here's the reality. If you actually know you're intelligent and you actually recognize the fact that you're one of the more intelligent people, you're stating nothing more than a fact. It might be slightly arrogant, but saying that you're one of the smartest people in your particular department is not a falsehood when that is actually a truth. When you're stating a truth, you're not necessarily being arrogant. You might be being an ass, but you're not being arrogant, at least not in my mind. Um... But a lot of the people that I worked with were equally intelligent. So it wasn't like I was dealing with morons. I, all of the people that were in my department were equally smart that I was working with. So it was a fantastic work environment as far as that goes. Didn't necessarily get along with some people, but that's the way, that's the way the things go. Um, so anyways, I, 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 I was uh, having, I was calling out about once a week due to that. To which my, my supervisors were not exactly happy with. And it was getting to a point where I kind of felt like, for those of you who have seen The Matrix, you'll kind of get the reference as far as this goes. For those of you who don't, go see The Matrix. Or, well, at this point, don't go see it. Go rent it or or, or stream it because it's an old movie. 
Um, but I was afraid due to the amount of times that I was calling out that I was going to have a Mr. Anderson moment. And I did talk to my supervisors about this and they're like, well, yeah, we were kind of starting to get towards that particular point because basically corporate has to think of business need. It doesn't matter if you're having a serious medical issue to where you literally can't work because you have medical issues that become so overwhelming to the point where you can't do your job. They don't care about that. What they care about is their bottom line. Fucking corporate jackasses. Um, I get it. You're a business. You're there to make money. And if you don't have somebody there to, uh, on the floor for customers to talk to, it creates a problem. So, I mean, I, I, I get that, but I also, yeah, I'll, I'll actually end up doing a separate video on that because it actually, it, it, it's something that, yeah. Um, so anyways, the MS though, especially towards about the last, especially the last two weeks that I was there, the MS started affecting my my verbal filters i've always had a verbal filter issue to start with i've always had an issue with telling people exactly what i thought and how i thought um in the past i've been able to moderately curtail it to where i'm moderately sociably polite and over the last couple months especially about the last month i'm not not even remotely um and i don't even bother to try and control it anymore because for the most part i can't control it i try which usually ends up me getting really quiet and walking away and then muttering or having an argument or cleaning or doing something so that I can get it out of my system.